My name is Julie Vaughn, and I'm a fourth year medical student at Indiana University School of Medicine. Today, we're going to be discussing how to use point of care ultrasound to evaluate possible rib fractures. A case for you. We have a 35 year old male presenting to his outpatient PCP two days after a motor vehicle collision in which the airbags deployed. He's endorsing sharp pain since the accident, pointing to a specific point about 20 centimeters inferior to his right axilla. He's endorsing this pain particularly with deep inspiration and with movement or twisting. He denies any radiation, he denies worsening of symptoms, denies hemoptysis, and shortness of breath. His vitals are all normal and stable, regular rate rhythm, clear to auscultation bilaterally, pulses are bilateral and symmetrical. He does have bruising to the right lateral thorax. Right off the bat, we're thinking, this guy very likely has a rib fracture. How do we test for that in the office right there? We can use ultrasound. Some indications for using ultrasound in this scenario is you can evaluate for acute rib fracture. You can see the fracture. Importantly, you can also rule out a concurrent pneumothorax. If this is farther out than two days, you can also evaluate for the healing process. Is it healing? How well is it healing? Etc. You can also identify other etiology of rib pain. If there's no fracture, no pneumothorax, what about an effusion? What about inflammation? You can see all of these things with the right training on point of care ultrasound. An important contraindication, which is a relative contraindication, is pain. You have to apply pressure over the area of discomfort to do this exam. So this can very much limit your exam because of the patient experience. How do you do it? I'll show you a video, de video demonstration in a moment, but in words, use a linear probe because this is going to be very superficial. You have your patient identify the area of maximal tenderness, and then you start by placing the probe longitudinally. You scan several centimeters out from the point of maximum discomfort, and then you scan all the way to the spine. You can have two fractures, one at the point and one where it's, this rib has become dislodged from the spine, so it's important to check for both. At that point, you will go back to where you started, you flip to transverse over the identified area and follow the rib back again all the way to the spine, making sure to check both ribs above and below because it may not be perfectly on the rib that you're looking. Below, you can see in longitudinal, you can see what a normal rib looks like in the fracture. You can see this inflammation, this effusion. And then in transverse, you can see this step off. The fracture, I believe, is much more clear to see in the transverse viewing window. So what does this look like? Starting longitudinally, you can see where I've started more medial. And I'm now scanning, making sure to continue obliquely to follow the ribs. You would scan all the way back to the spine. And then you go back to where you started, flip transverse, and follow the same path. And you follow the rib, looking for step-offs, looking for effusions. And that is how you do a rib ultrasound. Where can things go wrong? Pain, we talked about this earlier. You're putting pressure directly over their area of pain. This can be very limiting. Also, if someone's jabbing you in a painful spot in your ribs, you're probably going to move. And that patient movement can really affect the quality of your image. Also, ribs are oblique, so you'll need to play with the transducer angle to keep the rib in view. You're not going straight back. You need to go obliquely. And finally, as with most ultrasound exams, they are limited by sonographer experience. The more experience, likely the better the image is and the better the exam. The less experience, the opposite. Now, all of this being said, while this is a wonderful tool, the standard diagnostic test for rib fractures is currently chest x-ray, and the most sensitive scan is a CT scan. More research is appearing regarding the use of ultrasound and its high level of sensitivity. But please use your best clinical judgment. You need to weigh cost of exam versus your access to the exam. 
versus radiation exposure versus the quality of the exam and the time needed to do the exam or wait for an exam. There are a lot of factors to keep in mind, but remember ultrasound next time you have this specific clinical question you'd like to address. Thank you.